Good day to you, Guyana, and welcome to another edition of Facing the Nation. I am Malika Ramsey. Thank you so very much for joining us for the very first one in February. It is the month of February. I'd like to say welcome to February to all of you. Um, it seems as though 2018 is going to be another racehorse year. We're already in February, and I know there are lots of activities happening in February, including a, the next well not everyone um observes it or even focuses on it but i know what's happening next it's uh, it's going to be valentine's day um we have mashramani coming up for those of you who remember and who are very conscious in history conscious and so on this is also black history month so um and then too i must also add that the founding father of the people's national congress reform and also many of us consider him consider him the founding the the, or the nation's father um of course because we know how and when we gain independence his uh, of course god rest his soul his birthday is also going to be on the 20th of february and usually the people's national congress reform would have various activities i think also relaying ceremonies uh, just to remember um the great lyndon forbes samson burnham i heard a very senior person saying two or three days ago that he has never ever since then seen another politician like him and he doesn't think that he'll ever be another Lyndon Forbes, Sir Samson Burnham or anyone who coming close to fitting in his shoes. I, I, do, I don't know that in 2018 we mm -hmm. want another or we want a replica of him but it really is um, good to remember everything that he has done not only for the People's National Congress, of course that is before it became the reform, but everything that he has done for this nation and for us as a people. So I've said all of that just to remind you that um, his birth anniversary will be observed. It, of course, that would be on the 20th of February. So lots happening. Those of you who are preparing to join Mashramani camps or Mashramani bands, be, remember to be whatever you do, ensure that it's uh, all about self-preservation, ensure that you're going to be safe and so on. But as we come closer to Mashramani, need I, I remind you, which is on a Friday this year, Facing the Nation will not be on air on that day, of course. We, we're usually off on religious holidays, but Mashramani Day is a national holiday. And even if we come here, I don't think any anyone would be at home focusing on facing the nation. They will be uh, looking at uh, channels that will be carrying the different float parades and so on because I know there's also a new route for those uh, for that float parade this year. But you'll hear all of that as we come closer to the 23rd of February. Today's program, however, we have it's been more than a year since we have seen controversial conversations. Um, controversial actions even in some case unlawful actions because i can recall a man took a sledgehammer to uh one of the i can't remember the name of the devices that the the, the stuff that usually locks the wheel of a vehicle from moving so i should say that we've had we've seen unlawful things happening and it all started because um there was resist resistance shown to parking meters in our city and that conversation is beginning to start up again because uh some decisions were made and public pronouncements were made on the parking meter but i have the expert on the program with me here today He'll tell you exactly what is happening, what is happening, and what Guyanese can expect. What we'll, go, we'll, we'll do is, depending on how our conversation also flows, we will open up the phone lines, but specifically for you to call and deal with questions that you may have on the parking meter. Of course, I'll remind you as we get into the conversation, but enough of that from me now. Um, welcome back to Facing the Nation, his first time for the year, Mr. Akim Peter, who headed the negotiating team, the negotiating committee regarding the parking meter contract. Hakim Peter, welcome back to Facing the Nation. Thank you for having me again, Malika. All right. It's always wonderful to have you. I want to get right into the discussion. And viewers, I am really hoping that some of you indeed would want to call in and ask your questions, but specifically to parking meter. Of course, you're going to have to do it in a respectful manner too, because you may have questions and um, thinking about things that I'm not thinking of, but uh, especially as uh, road users, people who use our roads every day, especially if this will affect you directly. But Akim, let's talk we saw an article last week and I think the week before that the committee had completed its work mm -hmm. first of all what were some of the decisions that came that came out and and I, I think what we should do too is revisit 
why uh, another committee was necessary for those negotiations. Okay, well, um, Malaika, well, you know the backdrop of parking meters mm -hmm. within the city of Georgetown. It has had a lot of controversy since its inception, mm -hmm. um, both from the councils and, and in the councils chambers, and also the public outcry for the project. Um, well, we have, we had made a decision to have a fact-finding committee, which was headed by Councillor Malcolm Ferreira. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that committee, I must say congratulations to them again. Mm -hmm. um, they did most of the heavy lifting as it related to gathering the information and gathering the outcry mm -hmm. of the public, the different dimensions, etc., of those persons. Um, they also spoke to the private sector. They spoke to all the other ministries. Mm -hmm. They also spoke to schools, religious organizations. So they had a um, detailed look at what the public would want out of the project. And um, after that was done, their report was submitted. Mm -hmm. And from that report, the council voted in majority for recommendation A, which spoke to continuing with the parking, with metered parking, but not in the current form of the contract. Mm -hmm. And also to mandate a new committee to renegotiate the contract. That was done, and I was voted in as the chairman of that committee, um, which our mandate was to get the, be the best deal for the public and the citizens of Georgetown, mainly because we have also noticed that it had no longer become a Georgetown issue, but rather a national issue. Mm -hmm. So um, we were mandated to do that, and we examined all of the documents that were submitted. We also mm -hmm. examined the contract, the bylaws, and also the amendment, the first amendment. So in actuality, when these changes are implemented into the contract, mm -hmm. this will become the second amendment. Okay. All right. Now, what does that mean for uh, citizens, especially those in the city? Okay. Um, I can see off the bat mm -hmm. that amendment number two is more people friendly mm. and it's more beneficial for the residents of Georgetown and also for the persons traversing through the city of Rashtam. Um, mm -hmm. Like I must say, from the inception of the contract, I told the committee that it's not just a negotiation between the city and the concessionaire, but rather it's a tripartite conversation and negotiation between the concessionaire, the city, and the citizens. So at the end of the day, all parties must feel um, satisfied with the outcome of those discussions. At this point, do you feel that all parties are satisfied? Um, we have also noticed in the inception mm -hmm. from the beginning of the committee that we could not have pleased all parties as leaders and as representatives of the people mm -hmm. sitting in the seats of council um, we had to understand listen we can't please everyone what we must do is to ensure that they have the best deal possible considering all of the parameters that we ourselves were limited to because the contract was binding between the concessionaire and the city all right. I, I want to ask specifically about, and this is without naming and shaming, which is it's public knowledge, but I would want to eventually ask about a group that really and truly is still threatening to, for example, take protest action, but even before we go there, so that the public, especially those who may want to call in and ask questions about the parking meter, I want you to, if you're in a position to do that, get down to the specifics of what the uh, the aftermath of the negotiations would have produced in terms of conditions of parking payment time who will have to who wouldn't have to talk about that so that the, the viewers can understand exactly what what it is that they will have to play a role in as law-abiding citizens um i can i can see out the bat mm -hmm. like a movement against parking meeting that, and i think that's the group you were alluding mm -hmm. to I must say congratulations to them okay. and thank you very much for <laughs> the um, accountability that they have shown uh, representing or being representatives of, this, of the citizens of Georgetown. Um, because of that movement, the elected officials made a decision to renegotiate that contract. Okay. Because mm -hmm. of that outcry, um, we saw it in our best interest. So, have another conversation with the concessionaire with the cons because mm -hmm. it was clear that the citizens weren't pleased with what was put forward to them. I some persons might say, you know, we're putting the cart or we have, we had placed the, the, place cart, the cart before, before the horse. The horse. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a learning process. It's it's a new contract for the city, one which has never been um, 
enacted before. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, as politicians and as representatives um, mm -hmm. at the Mayor and City Council, we understood that, listen, sometimes it's good to say, listen, we made a mistake mm -hmm. um, with the pricing. So here yeah. we are, and we're trying we're to, trying to yeah, fix adjust. it right and make it right for it, which will eventually benefit the citizens. Now, getting into the amendments so, yeah. that were made, um, I know a lot of persons were interested in the pricing yes. because that was one of the that main That was the concerns, problem, the main problem, actually. Right, mm -hmm. the main concerns with the pricing and how, how much of an impact it had on the wallets of the persons within the city of Georgia, and especially those who work for minimum wage mm -hmm. and they own a vehicle. Um, the committee took that into deep consideration, mm -hmm. even before meeting with our partners. And we decided internally that, listen, examining the working class within the city, we must be able and to give them something that they would deem affordable. Mm -hmm. So the adjusted rate mm -hmm. uh, coming from 200 plus VAT, we lowered that by 45%. Mm -hmm. And we achieved that in a concession year with a bit of back and forth um, because it was a business negotiation in actuality. Well, of course, these are numbers. People who know me know that numbers aren't my thing, but I understand exactly <laughs> what's happening here. But uh, just for clarity, I want you to state specifically the, the amount of money now that you would have to pay less for parking. Okay, um, before you had to pay. Well, let's start from the inception. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. When the contract was brought into beer, the concessionaire was charging $578 for an hour of parking. Mm -hmm. During the first negotiation, they dropped that price to $228. Mm -hmm. That is, all these prices I'm telling you is VAT inclusive. VAT inclusive and for various times. Yes, mm -hmm. right? But now, this amendment, you're going to pay $150 per hour VAT inclusive. VAT inclusive. Yes. $150 and also, per hour. Um, $800 for the entire day VAT inclusive. I, I want to jump right in here. And I know that I speak for the people. I am not one who, would, I'm not going to come out and say I'm fully against the parking meets because I felt good in terms of the order that we saw in various parts of the city. However, I agree with so many other persons that should not come as a burden and the you know, added expense to especially working citizens and so on living in the city who drive or whatever. And then there was also the issue with taxi drivers. I just want to do a breakdown for you. Someone gave me an example. You're talking about for eight hours, $800. But still, isn't that somewhat of a burden when you're working Monday to Friday okay. in the city? And then, of course, obviously, you have all... But I can use another example. There are people who live in Region 3 who use the Heart of the Demerara Harbor Bridge every day for work. And they have an added cost in terms of when you get to the bridge. There's a toll that you have to pay, which is not an exorbitant amount. But you add that up. You're talking about $800 for parking for eight hours we don't get into people who work overtime as yet and then you add that two hundred dollars even forget the overtime for now they did the over the extra hours the longer than eight hours that you would have to work you add eight hundred dollars to two thousand to two hundred dollars you're talking about about a thousand dollars every day every day combination of parking and toll and again this is just the people who live across the river but then there are people who don't have to pay that toll still eight hundred dollars is a burden yeah when you look at it from that angle it mm -hmm. is a burden indeed mm -hmm. um but as counselors I, mm -hmm. we did extensive research in other cities also. okay and we looked at the purpose for parking meters within the city and so we understood you know coming from a representative standpoint of the people and also now to a representative of the city of itself mm -hmm. um, we notice that listen we also have a responsibility so within the next two years the mayor city council will also be instituting their park and ride initiative okay. where they will provide parking lots for the working, working persons within the georgetown mm -hmm. so you can go and you can park and you can make your way to your workplace, mm -hmm. which will help with traffic it management would. and traffic it congestion. Would. So it's not us implementing a that. metered parking mm -hmm. and burdening the city, but rather we are we, we have considered <laughs> <laughs> we have considered the cry of the residents as it relates to 
that economics, mm -hmm. you know, we're paying all that money just for parking. Mm -hmm. We would also be encouraging persons to be more health conscious. Instead of driving and parking right in front of your workplace, then you just come out and walk into the door. You you be more responsible about it. Mm -hmm. um, you walk. You, you walk. Distance. You walk. Um, when we when we visit other you I don't you have visited other <laughs> cities and persons park way mm -hmm. where there's free parking and make their way down to the workplace because they understand the system and they understand how important it is mm -hmm. for you to be able to traverse through the mm -hmm. city so we have made consideration there uh, that is true there's always a pushback however and again this is not me pushing back against the the meters because i did say that i felt that they provided order but there is always that pushback when you tell people oh you go to other cities and you do it People, people tell you all sorts of things. Well, in other cities, uh, certain facilities are better. But I think what is happening, what has happened, uh, you, we're a 50-something-year-old 50, 50 country. It, 50 years is a long time. It's going to take some time for culture yeah. to break. It's unfortunate that certain things that are totally unheard of or illegal or wrong in some other countries or people are Longer. laid back and they be, become yeah. a norm. I, I think that, and, and that is why I'm happy that, you know, most guests that come here always talks, talks about what they're going to do in schools because in order to change the culture, you have to start in the schools. So there is always going to be pushback. But in terms of, and I see we're getting a call here. If you're a caller, I hope you're calling to talk about, to ask about the parking meters. Um, I'm going to take the call, but viewers, if you're calling in, ask questions about the parking meters, especially if you don't understand certain things about that. Caller, welcome. Caller, are you there? Caller, good day. All right. Apparently, we lost that call. Yes, so the the issue is always that for certain facilities are better in other countries. So uh, the, the, the culture uh, is going to take me, some time. Me, Go let ahead. Me, let me just show this out there. I know we've already been receiving calls. Mm -hmm. But before, th before we take those calls, let me explain two more um, recommendations. And there is so much mm -hmm. that we altered in the contract. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of underlining even recommendations we made to them, the concessionaire, about their PR and the importance of, as you said, culture within the city. Because Georgia, the people, the citizens, even myself, we are accustomed parking, you know, once mm -hmm. there's a free spot. Well, you, you just park, go and you park. And uh -huh. you park. This order that um, we're trying to bring now to the city would not be accepted with open arms because of the no. culture of the people. Um, so we recommended to them that you need to do a lot, more, a lot more work in schools. You need to do a lot more initiatives to educate people. And it's not only going to be about money, you garnering your investment, but rather you have to, uh, social responsibility to the citizens to mm -hmm. teach them about this um, new project that you're bringing in. Um, in addition to the prices being, go ahead. In addition to the prices being lowered. What we did also mm -hmm. is we implemented and our partners agreed mm -hmm. that we implement a system instead of paying for space, mm -hmm. you now pay for time. So your time becomes more manageable. Mm -hmm. Because what we noticed in the inception, what was happening is that you bought a card for an hour uh, for $228. And once you put in that card into the machine, that card goes dead. Okay. Even if you stay half an hour in the store or half an hour in the bank. What we did is alter that system. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to pay for time. So your card becomes a prepaid card. So once you go to any machine, once you have time on that card, mm -hmm. you can use it. You there. can use it. So it becomes more manageable. So in actuality, let's say for those not working eight hours in the city and you're traversing in just to do business or you're going to visit someone within Georgetown. You can actually manage that eight hours if you buy a card for eight hours for the entire month because you wouldn't stay there all day for eight hours. Okay. So it becomes more manageable. More manageable. All right. Um, viewers, if you're now tuning in, this is Facing the Nation, of course. Today I am chatting with Akeem Peter. But before I tell, I see another call coming. What we'll do, we'll, tr we'll try to take a quick break i trust that i'm not putting my operators on the spot here a quick break and then come back but before we uh just take that break we're chatting with akim peter as you know the conversation about the parking meter would have been in the public domain again it's resurfaced and we're talking about that 
and uh, the calls that we're going to take is basically for you to ask your questions about um, the parking meter contract and uh, hopefully I know for a fact that Akim will be able to answer those questions but we'll take a quick we'll be gone for less than a minute and we'll come right back this is facing the nation <laughs> Thanks for staying with us on our discussion about the parking meter contract. I, I see we're getting calls, so we'll open the phone lines. Please turn the volumes of your television sets down. Be respectful. And the only thing that Akim is going to answer questions on today is the parking meter contract. And uh, all the questions you may have regarding city council matters. Facing the nation, welcome. Hello. Yes, caller, good, good day. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Um, but parking meter, um, the guys to say you went to other city. He consider he considered the wages for the other people who work in the other city with the wages again. He was he considered the fact we don't the other city don't pay the kind of fact. Mm -hmm. He consider the um, he consider the, the, the what you get in the other city, mm -hmm. huh? In terms of facilities. You don't consider that. Mm -hmm. He working with the parking meter, so he got a talk about the parking meter. All right, caller, you're not well, going to do that. You, 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 you. Have you made your point? Did you ask your no, question? No, he got to consider. He consider half of the country working in the city. Uh huh. They all the job in the city. Uh huh. So, if people that come to the city and spend a thousand dollars a day, and they're working for um, three thousand dollars a day, they got. I and they've been working for three thousand hours a day. They've been working for three thousand hours a day. You consider the pressure you put on the people now? All right, caller. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, viewers, I'll tell you what. You know, I always urge you to pay keen attention when you're um, viewing Facing the Nation. First of all, and I did uh, introduce Akim earlier as the head of the negotiating team for the parking meter contract. I also indi indicated that he's a Georgetown City Councilor. He does not work with the parking meter company. Akim, please comment on the sentiments made. Well, the sentiments made um, were sentiments we've heard before. They aren't new. And we have considered all of those things. In, in my introductory, mm -hmm. in my introduction actually, I said, you know, we have given consideration to the working class and to the people of the nation. Mm -hmm. um, accountants attached to the ministry, well, to the city council, mm -hmm. they provided us with the information which spoke to numbers. Mm -hmm. Because I can sit here and I can talk numbers, but those numbers were backed by yeah. the documents submitted. Um, also, the amount of vehicles coming in and out of the city. And um, us having an understanding of what it will take to regulate traffic within the city of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And that was a big question. Because, Malika, we must understand something. This isn't about making money. That's how we went into the negotiations. It, okay. We did not go in, and I like how you corrected the caller that I don't work for Smart City Solutions. But it's not about making money. Mm -hmm. what, it, what parking meters are for mainly is for traffic management mm -hmm. within the city. So with that in focus and that in mind, we had to make some hard decisions. And because it, it was a council's decision, we could not have decided in the committee to resend the contract because mm -hmm. that was not our mandate. Our mandate was to provide, well, a renegotiation platform and mm -hmm. then bring recommendations back to full council. So there, there was never, an, an, uh, when it fell in your purview or not, there was never a question. I mean, I know some of this would have been public knowledge, but for clarity, there, there never was a question about 
completely scrapping mm -hmm. the contract. Was there an, an in the first the first committee? One of the five recommendations that came forward mm -hmm. was for us to rescind um, the contract and to scrap it all together. Mm -hmm. But because of the organization that we were part of, and um, because you are part of a greater whole, you don't necessarily go against the greater whole because you mm -hmm. didn't have your way um, when it came to a certain issue. Because I, sitting on the committee, I was the only person who voted to wait for the court's ruling on the matter. Okay. I did not vote for the, the recommendation the, to mm -hmm. be, you know, for the parking meter contract to be renegotiated. But the council saw it fit because of my stance to say, listen, because you have certain concerns with the project, we're going to give you an opportunity to make it right and to have an independent ear, not for, neither for, against, right? But to have an independent ear and move the, move the city forward as it relates to metered parking. So mm -hmm. it, it's never an issue, and it was never an issue for the committee as it relates to money. We weren't considering that. Our main concern was how are we going to get the city of Darshan to be more controlled with traffic? And that is why I spoke about in the next 18 to 24 months, the Mayor and City Council will be introducing par a park and ride systems throughout Joshua. How, how concrete is that? Because, uh, uh, and again, this is not me hitting City Council, but time and time again, we would hear that, okay, we're, we're going to do this. And I, I, I think even before I move on, I should take uh, this call. Caller, good day to you. Hi, good day. Yes, good day. Yeah, it's a good system indeed. Yes, but I can put into consideration whereby you can look at that. Jacho is a small place, right? Uh -huh. uh, look, don't be like Fat Men, they are good. You get the American city two states, right? Mm -hmm. You get another parking facility, but you get it too small. You get it 300 parcels, one park, you go to South Maxwell really shopping. And consider taxi drivers in the park holding, mm -hmm. they're getting one job. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what are you looking at here? So, really, it's in a sense, it, it makes a sense. Thank you, caller. All right, thank you. All right. Yes, we appreciate that. And that's what I'm saying. We don't mind you opposing, but at least the caller explained himself. And these are things that we took into consideration. And Hakim, I like the fact that he raised the issue of taxi drivers because they i know they felt the squeeze when you know the parking meters were first first came on stream were you or does the council feel the need or i don't know if this comes on the, the purview of the committee of itself do you feel the need to have any sort of special arrangement or any sort of reaching out to taxi drivers specifically around the city um, the concessionaire has um given his well, I don't want to say his, but they have committed to mm -hmm. having a conversation with mm -hmm. taxi drivers, with mm -hmm. bus drivers, well, not bus drivers because their spots are allocated already, mm -hmm. but with the religious organizations, with schools, schools uh -huh. right? So you can actually, for example, let me just give you an example. And Malika, before I go there, we, as taxi drivers, even those working on the streets and who park on the roads, mm -hmm. we, they must form themselves into associations and groups and be... Um, organized, organized um. so as to go forward um, to the concessionaire because they are open now for recommendations as to listen, we would like this um, street or so many slots to be allotted to us because of these reasons and you must give formal reasons because what's going to happen if taxis are free you don't know how many taxis are part of your organization. Mm -hmm. You don't know how many taxes are in the city.